In Atlanta, San Francisco's Wilbur Jackson scored on a two-yard run in the third quarter for the game's only touchdown. Later, the 49ers added a field goal and held on for a 10-3 upset win over the Falcons. The Cincinnati Bengals moved back into contention in the AFC Central Division with a 10-7 upset win over the Browns. Pete Johnson scored on an 11-yard run, and Chris Barr kicked the winning field goal midway through the fourth quarter. Billy White Shoes Johnson almost single-handedly destroyed the Chicago Bears. He scored two TDs, one on a 61-yard end around, and the other on this 75-yard punt return. Ken Burrows also scored twice. He caught touchdown passes of 85 and 43 yards as the Oilers rocked 47 to nothing. Jim Hart passed for two touchdowns. Wayne Morris and Terry Metcalf each scored twice as the Cardinals had an easy time in beating the Vikings 27-7 in Minnesota. And the Dallas Cowboys remain the only unbeaten team in the NFL following their 24-10 win over the Giants. A five-yard touchdown pass from Roger Staubach to Billy Joe Dupree. And Tony Dorsett's one-yard scoring plunge paced the Cowboys to their win. Cincinnati Bengals bounce back into the playoff picture this afternoon as they upset the Cleveland Browns by a score of 10 to 7. Quarterback Kenny Anderson, 14 to 19 for 153 yards. Isaac Curtis, five catches, 71 yards. All that on a bad leg, out of bounds at the 11-yard line, sets up this touchdown. Pete Johnson, who's been knocked by his teammate Booby Clark, shows him on this drive, 7-0 after the extra point. Brian Seif, 20 of 28 for 189 yards. It's Reggie Rucker, who's run out at the 13-yard line and that will set up this touchdown it's a pass Sipe to his tight end Oscar Roan at the one yard line and Roan barges in it was 7-7 and for the second week in a row it was Chris Barr with a field goal which gave Cincinnati the win now their record four and four Cleveland's record five and three the rest of the scores Oakland rolling this afternoon against Seattle 27 nothing right now in the second quarter and Denver bouncing back after last week's disappointment Pittsburgh faces a lot of turmoil. Going to be tough now for the Steelers to get into the playoffs. St. Louis and Minnesota. The Cardinals have scored three times and missed one extra point. In the game you're watching, 17 to nothing. The Los Angeles Rams lead the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Kansas City beats Green Bay under new head coach Tom Bettis. 2010, the final there. And look at this final. 47 to nothing, Houston over Chicago. And an NFC team finally beats an AFC team for the first time this year. 20-0, Detroit shuts out San Diego. The big upset. Without O.J. Simpson, Buffalo beats New England. Grogan is intercepted four times by the Bills. Hooks replaces Simpson and rushes for 156 yards. The game you just watched, 10-7. Final score, Cincinnati a winner. Miami beats the New York Jets this afternoon by four points. Richard Todd injured in that game. Dom Reyes cleans up for the Jets. San Francisco wins its third in a row over Atlanta, 10-3 the final there. Philadelphia behind Ron Jaworski beats New Orleans 28-7. And it was the Dallas Cowboys 24, the New York Giants 10. And so, Phyllis, the Cowboys still unbeaten. And what do we got outside of football this afternoon? What'd you just say? The Cowboys still, still unbeaten. unbeaten. <laughs> you can make me say it over and over. <laughs> well, Brent, in Atlanta, the Dixie 500 had been stopped due to rain after 300 136 miles with Dave Pearson leading. With the word is they started up again with Richard Petty and Cale Yarbrough in second and third positions. And you can see highlights of that race next Saturday at 4:30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS Sports Spectacular. Now in baseball news, Atlanta Braves owner Ted Turner appears closer to hiring New York Yankees coach Bobby Cox. Cox flew to Atlanta to meet with Turner, so we'll wait to see what happens. And a group of New Orleans businessmen visited Oakland Hayes owner Charlie Finley today in an effort to move the team. To to the Superdome, but no deal has been made as of yet. And this unusual development in New York this afternoon. The Attorney General had asked five boxing promoters to pay their back taxes to the state for matches they promoted last year. Combined, they owe more than, are you ready for this, fellas? $400,000. Good luck to those five promoters. That's just write them a check, fellas. That's right. Just write it out. <laughs> Curve Cross has taught White Shoes Johnson a brand new move. Back with that. As the NFL Today continues on CBS after these messages, for your local station. 8 0 oh, and flying high, the Dallas Cowboys, sir. Flying high, let's take a look at it. Dallas came into New York, Brent, of course, uh, leading the entire National Football League in total offense and total defense, but he needed a play from their special teams to get something on the board early. Bobby Hammond here takes a punt from the Cowboys and muffs the ball here, but is picked up by his teammate. Jones, who's hit and fumbles it, and is scooped up by Jay Saldi of the Cowboys. He slides in the end zone for a touchdown, 7 0 Dallas. Giants try to come back, but Sarchi throwing the ball is picked off by Cliff Harris, setting up a scoring opportunity for the Cowboys. But here's a long pass from Staubach to his 
favorite receiver, Richards, out here. Pass interference in the end zone on Bill Bryant. Cowboys have the ball on the one-yard line. They go in. Tony Dorsett, Dallas leads 21-3. Bobby Hammond wanted to make up for that previous muff punt. Brent here, he takes a Danny White punt. Watch what he does with it this time. He's really determined to make a good run, and he does. He comes along the right sideline, picks up a nice wall of blockers, takes the ball down to the seven-yard line, setting up a scoring opportunity for the Giants. He goes in himself. 21 to nothing at that point, and Dallas went on to win the game 24 to 10 and remain undefeated. Irv, Steve Bartkowski returned today as the Atlanta Falcon quarterback, but it was not a successful return. San Francisco won its third in a row today. It was scoreless at the half. Steinford kicked off to start the second half. Paul Hofer on a return left, got a couple of key blocks and busted out to the San Francisco 47-yard line. Plunkett held the 5 of 12 for 50 yards, but this one critical to his fine tight end, Tom Mitchell, who got inside the 40-yard line. Wilbur Jackson from the one, the first rushing touchdown this year against that tough Falcon defensive unit. We'll show you just how tough a defensive game this was. Atlanta first and 10 on the 20. Here is Woody Thompson. He has got daylight. He has met helmet on, and he coughs it up. And winner gets back to the 19-yard line. Then it was Dell Williams running. And watch that Atlanta defense go to work against him as the guards pull out to lead the way. Fumble. Atlanta recovers. Steinfort, who replaced the fired Mickemeyer, got the field goal. Too little too late. 10-3. San Francisco wins again. And Irv Cross, Ron Jaworski, good day for Philly. Big story down in Philadelphia. The Eagles defeated the New Orleans Saints by a score of 28-7. Ron Jaworski ran for two touchdowns, passed for two, and here's one on the ground. He sneaks in there in the second quarter. The Eagles take a 7-0 lead. Ron going back this time from his own 24 four-yard line. Hits Herb Lusk. Got a nifty catch there by Herb, setting up a scoring opportunity for the Eagles. Jaworski going to his favorite receiver, Harold Carmichael. Touchdown. Carmichael caught two passes today for 16 yards and two touchdowns. Bobby Douglas trying to get the Saints going. Throws an errant pass. Johnny Deke Sanders picks it off. His second interception of the game is fourth of the year. Returning the ball down to the six-yard line, and Jaworski goes to work again. This time, number 17, Carmichael again. Another touchdown. The Eagles lead 21 to nothing. Ron, this time with seven seconds left to go on the clock, decides to go in himself. He goes in, and the Eagles took a commanding lead, 28 to 7. Irv, what a dreadful afternoon for the Chicago Bears down in the Houston Astrodome. They were buried. Main man, White Shoes Johnson, Pastorini, Kenny Burrow, they all had big days. Coleman had burned them early, so this time he went to the end of round and handed it off to Johnson, who bust one 61 yards. And White Shoes, are you in a dancing frame of mind on this Sunday afternoon down in the Dome? You betcha, he says. Been a long time since I busted one that long. Pastorini, 12-19, 247 yards, two touchdowns to Kenny Burrow, 85 in that one for 43. Walter Payton was stopped, 18 carries, 79 yards. Chicago does not run well against the 3-4 defensive set. Now, one of the linebackers of the Oilers, Bingham, will scoop it up and run it in, 34 yards for the touchdown. That made it 38-0. So Mike Phipps then replaced Bob Avellini, and the former Cleveland Brown quarterback buried for the two-point safety. Chicago then got the free kick from the 20-yard line. Time once again for White Shoes count the would-be Chicago tacklers. There's four so far. Gets away from a fifth. Outruns a sixth and a seventh. Schubert loses his shoe right there. He's the last man who could have caught him. We've seen the dance, big guy. Show us something brand new. All right, the 10-foot dunk. <laughs> Miami now in the New York Jets. 14-10 was the final score there. Richard Todd injured in that game. Marty Domres tried to rally the Jets, but he couldn't. Greasy, 12-15, 132 yards and two touchdowns to Harris. Here's the first interference. Doesn't matter. He got the touchdown anyway. Now watch this one. He wants Harris again. Does he thread this ball? Those glasses are working, aren't they, for Greasy? Here's a key play for the Dolphin defense. Fourth and one, and they stop the Jets right there. Domres passing to Jerome Barkham. This touchdown pulled the Jets to within four points after the extra point. Now watch the Dolphin defense go to work. Domres doesn't release in time. Can't find someone open. Look at this. Get it to somebody. But you got to get a touchdown. Time ran out. 14-10. And... All right, let me welcome those of you who have been watching Los Angeles, Tampa Bay. For those of you who were not, the final score was 31 to nothing. The Los Angeles Rams over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Phyllis, we've just received a message out of Denver about the commissioner. And I want to ask Irv and Hawk about this. Roselle's in Denver to talk to Joe Green about Joe Green's verbal attacks and abuse on officials on the field. Pete says he won't take any action until after he meets with Joe Green. Now, how serious is it? And, and I'm sure it happens all the time. Why mean Joe Green? Hawk? I, I think... Uh... 
Mean Joe Green made some statement uh, in regard to uh, him levying a fine on one of the Cincinnati players on a Monday night game for unnecessary roughness or uh, some kind of uh, conduct. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that he leveled, levied uh, something like a $2,000 fine on him. Woo. And Mean Joe Green kind of uh, took exception to that and decided that it wasn't the commissioner's job to do that, that the players might ought to police up their own game, which I'm much in favor of. Or, you know, I, I don't know specifically what the incident is that uh, Joe is referring to, Phyllis, but I know generally as a policy in the league, anytime anybody publicly criticizes the officials, whether it's a player or a coach or anybody in team management, is subject to some kind of disciplinary action from the commissioner, and uh, that might be. Did part either of this. you guys ever have the urge to do it while you were playing? You got mad at an official and you said something maybe you wish you hadn't said. <laughs> got mad at him all the time. <laughs> but you didn't say it, right? Your mother told you not to say those things. <laughs> Final is in now on Oakland. They beat Seattle 44 7 is the count there. And Irv, let's pick up the highlights with Green Bay, Kansas City. We haven't seen them yet this afternoon. Okay, Kansas City picked up their second win today, Brent, under a new head coach and Tom Bettis. Of course, uh, Paul Wigan was fired earlier in the week. They won by a score of 20 to 10. And it was really Kansas City all the way today. Mike Levinson goes to the air early in the ball game and hits Walter White. An outstanding tight end, and he goes out of bounds to the 14-yard line, which sets up another scoring opportunity for the Chiefs. This time, Livingston to Marshall. He goes in for a score, and they take a 10-0 lead at this point in the game. Mike Livingston hands the ball off to number 14, uh, Podolak, who goes in from the one-yard line, 17-3, Kansas City. On a kickoff here, Steve Odom, a little razzle-dazzle, takes the ball and hands off to rookie number 34, Middleton, and Middleton goes all the way, 97 yards for a touchdown, but too late, too little, and Kansas City picked up their second win of the year, 20 to 10, or their first of the year under their new head coach, and by the way, Paul Wigan received the game ball from his teammates. That was something, wasn't it? Hock and Irv, the Cincinnati Bengals also bounced back in the playoff picture in the AFC, as St. Louis did in the NFC. Kenny Anderson was the quarterback today against the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. Isaac Curtis with a comeback, playing with that injured leg. He's run out of bounds at the Cleveland 11-yard line. This was a tough, tough football game. They really banged away. Here's Johnson from Ohio State. Touchdown run. 7-0 after the extra point. Ryan Seif. Phyllis, he played well after you interviewed him early this week. He hits Reggie Rucker. Run out at the 13-yard line, but it set up this touchdown. And it's your man Seif. Going to go to his tight end, Oscar Roan. Got him at the one. Touchdown. It was tied. And again, it was bar. Oh, how important these field goal kickers are. 10-7. Cincinnati wins. And Irv, what about Miami and the Jets? Miami and the Jets. 14-10 Miami, Brent. They pick up their sixth win of the year. And the Jets, on the other hand, suffer their sixth defeat of the year. And it looked like it was going to be the Bob Greasy Harris show. In the second quarter, Greasy goes to number 82, Duriel Harris who rips up field for a touchdown, Miami 7, the Jets 3. Greasy again, number 82, Mr. Harris. He goes in for another score, Miami 14, the Jets 3. The Jets try to get back on defense, but uh, they, Miami's defense uh, holds the Jets are inside the one-yard line. Dahmer is substituting here, throws a touchdown pass to Barkham. And Miami's defense here does the job again. Darmus, who was in there for Todd, who was injured earlier in the ball game, can't find anybody open. Just simply throws the ball away. But too late, too little again. Brent and Miami won the game, 14-10. Irv, the commissioner's office just called. They have not yet fined Joe Green, but the commissioner will talk to him after today's game. Let's check in on the standings right now as we have made the turn. We're starting the NFC East. Dallas Cowboys, and there are the St. Louis Cardinals with that big win today over Minnesota. They bounce back because that wild card spot in the NFC is so wide open. Now, how about the NFC Central? Well, it is always Minnesota again, but Chicago has to be asking itself if we had just made a move this year, we would have had a shot. Detroit now beats San Diego today, so at 500, they're not out of the wild card picture. And I'll tell you, Minnesota, the way they play today, they'll have to be much stronger just to hold on to that lead. And in the West, as we've got some fine races brewing, the Rams with a one-game lead on the Atlanta Falcons, 500. Who would have thought that in one of these days? Tampa Bay has got to bust loose. San Francisco on the rebound. Over now in the AFC, Baltimore and Miami. And, of course, the story there is Baltimore plays Washington tomorrow night. And how about those Dolphins coming back under Don Shula? That's a good coaching job, isn't it? And New England, what a battle that's going to be. In the AFC Central now, there it is. Cleveland with a one-game lead over Pittsburgh, Houston, and Cincinnati. Talk about a wide-open race. Western Division now, well, it is the Denver Broncos with that big apparent victory over Pittsburgh. It's still 21-7 in the fourth quarter. They are tied with Oakland, San Diego, Kansas City, and Seattle. And uh, 
Hawk, we never get a chance to ask you if you've got any predictions. Uh, who do you think is going to make it to the Super Bowl? I would say right now it looks like Los Angeles and Dallas. <laughs> They're the best two teams I've seen today. <laughs> You're right. The Cowboys, the Cowboys, it's their year. It it's really their year. And, and that AFC, I never get to see any of the teams, so I really don't know. Okay, that wraps it up for Alex Ockers, Irv Cross, Phyllis George. I'm Brent Musburger. We certainly hope that you've enjoyed the NFL Today on CBS. See you next Sunday, everybody. Have a nice week, and stay tuned for 60 Minutes. The NFL Today is sponsored by Merrill Lynch. Merrill Lynch is bullish on America. Alcoa, Aluminum Company of America. Ford and your Ford dealer who invite you to see their better ideas for 78, including Fairmont, the Ford in your future. And by Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. Since 1844, the quality has always come through. The NFL Today is a presentation of CBS Sports. West Chandler showed his versatility this afternoon in the Gator Bowl, scoring three touchdowns, one on a 12-yard pass from Terry LeCount, and two rushing in the second half. Chandler's performance helped the Gators overcome some first-half mistakes and a 17-10 halftime deficit. His third quarter, 18-yard run, brought the Gators to within one point, and he scored the winning TD on a one-yard dive in the fourth, the final 22-17 Florida. Meanwhile, in Baton Rouge, second-ranked Alabama rolled to a 24-3 victory over LSU. Running back Tony Nathan also showed how versatile he is. He scored touchdowns on a pair of one-yard runs in the middle quarters, and he also threw a TD pass in the final stanza to Kevin Pugh. The win leaves the Crimson Tide undefeated in SEC play and almost assures them a trip to the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans for New Year's.